So you also must be ready. Tell your neighbor, you also. Because it goes, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, this evening, Father God, for your presence, Father God, in this house. Right now, Father God, we just pray that you open up our hearts. Let us open up our minds, Father God. Let us receive your word, Father God, that is being ministered today. But through it all, Lord, always giving you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. Give your neighbor a high five and say, get ready. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So we started a new series talking about get ready with urgency. How many of us know that we need to have urgency right now, especially right now as we're getting closer to God, that we need to start preparing. There needs to be preparedness within our own spirit, amen, because in reality, are we living the way we need to be living for the coming when God comes, amen? So we talked about it, but let me go on verse 36 right now. Verse 24, 36. The word of God reads like this. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Tell your neighbor, no one knows. No one knows. Not even the angels in heaven nor the son, but only the father as it was in the days of Noah. You see, when we read that portion of scripture here, it talked about it was the days of Noah. Everybody know the story of Noah's Ark, right? Yes. You see, the people weren't prepared. They weren't ready. They didn't even know what rain was. But one day that God said, hey, build a boat. And it took them that amount of time to build it. But in other words, Noah got prepared. Tell your neighbor, Noah got it. Oh, come on. Let's give a clap off for him because Noah did get it. Amen. But when we talk about get ready with urgency, we have to, you know, understand that urgency means that something's going to occur, which is going to come when Jesus comes back. That means that if we understand that, it means that God is coming back for his churches. And if you're a part of his church, hallelujah, I say, let's get prepared for what God has. You know, we start thinking about, look at the times that we're living in. Tell your neighbor, we don't have to go too far to see that the times are evil. There's a lot of stuff going on in the atmosphere right now. And I believe that the enemy is already coming anywhere that he can creep in. And a lot of us, because we're not prepared, we're just giving in. But I'm going to tell you right now, God has something that is going to be way beyond. 2023 is a time that we need to start opening up our eyes, amen, getting in it. And with urgency and understanding that, hey, wait a minute, God has a plan for me. Well, again, urgency means an event that is occurring with requiring immediate attention. Meaning that we need to open up our eyes. Tell your neighbor, we got to open up our eyes. But I'm talking about the spiritual eyes. We have to understand that there's an opposition that's already coming on this earth. That's already polluting it. Big time. But if we're alert, we understand that, hey, wait a minute, I need to remain standing in what God has called me. Amen. But also we got to press. Tell your neighbor, we got to press. Calling when you press is calling for immediate attention. Meaning that we have to understand that, hey, there's things going on. There's things going on right now in the atmosphere that you got to be alert. And understanding that, okay, yeah, you know what? I don't need control of the situation. I'm not going to allow what I'm looking at control on the way that I'm going to walk, but I'm going to keep it in prayer. Hallelujah, Lord. I need to pray over this situation. I trust you. I believe you. I know that you got this. Amen. But I'm getting ready for when you come back. Amen. And that way I can bring everyone that is still lost towards you to face on you to trust you. Could I get... And amen. Well, pressing. Ephesians 5.16 says, make the best use of the time because the days are evil. But right now, before I go on, 
I'm going to go ahead and call up one of the speakers that are coming out. And we're going to go ahead and call up Brother Anthony. Amen. Oh, come on. We can give a good clap offering. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. All right. Seven minutes, right? All right. Let's do this. All right. Now, I'm going to get into scripture right now. I'm going to read off of Matthew. Sorry, church. Pastor called me a couple hours ago, so. But I heard if you're ready, you don't have to get ready. Amen. Amen. Right here. Matthew 24, oh, 22, I'm sorry, no, 24, yeah, all right, right here, Matthew uh, 24, 36 to 44, sorry, church, let's, let's get into the word now, all right, it says right here, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day of Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with the handmill, one will be taken, and the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the household had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would have not let the house be broken into. So also, so you also must be ready. Amen? Because the Son of Man will come at any hour when you do not expect him. Amen. <sighs> Heavenly Father, my God, Lord Jesus, my God, my Lord, right now I ask that you decrease me, my God, and increase in me, my Lord. I ask that your living waters flow, my God. I ask that your Holy Spirit control me, my Lord. I ask that you just minister to me, my God. And I ask that you open minds and hearts right now, my God, to be sanctified by your truth, my Lord. I ask that your word flow in this place to worship, my God. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, how many of us know the times are evil? The days are evil. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, uh, my spiritual vision sees that the enemy is really attacking the younger generation. Amen? You know, we have, check this out. There's, it's crazy right now. You know, there's, there's, you know, there, if a man considers himself another man, it's considered con uh, schizophrenia, right? But if a man considers himself a woman, they praise it. Amen? The world is really corrupt right now. And we need to open our eyes because really spiritual vision we need right now because that's how, it's urgency. Uh, Pastor talks about urgency. And this is an urgent message right now. This is an urgent message from God. He's trying to speak through me right now. And right here, uh, uh, I like how one of, my, one of the most important persons in the word of God, I like John the Baptist because he was on fire for the Lord. He spoke truth. He spoke truth, and in the beginning of this, this uh, book, he's screaming, uh, uh, um, repent, repent, yeah. repent. What do you say? He says, repent for the kingdom of the Lord, or the, for the kingdom of heaven is in the hand. Amen? Amen? God is moving right now. God is moving right now, but the enemy is moving at the same time. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And it's the Matthew 5, 14, he says, you are the light of the world. You know, he's choosing us to be his vessels. There's people out there that are struggling. There's people out there that are lost. There's people out there that are thinking about suicide. It's calling on us to go save them. Amen? God chose us. And it's, it, it's, it's, the world is dark right now. And the Lord's really been speaking to me. And, and I see I'm very sensitive for the younger generation because I have kids myself. And I'm not just going to stand here and let the enemy hit my children or, or hit the young ones, you know. I was saved. I got to remember, the Lord pulled me out of a, a dark place. So it's my turn to go save other people. Amen? Amen. The mic's off, so I'll go. Hello? Check it. Hello? Hello? Amen. Amen. 
Hey, the enemy can do what he wants. God's in control, amen? Yes, amen. Yeah. Amen. So, so we're chosen vessels, amen? We're chosen vessels. The word of God, Romans 1.16 says, For I will not be ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God that brings salvation, amen? See, we always got to remember it's God. It's God. When we wake up in the morning, it's his will be done, not ours. Amen? amen? There's people out there struggling, like I said. And, you know, it's going to push us into uncomfortable situations that we don't want to be in. Like, I'm up here. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I was on fire for the world. I did whatever the world wanted me to do. Believe me when I say that. Man, just give me a spray can and a 40-ounce bottle. Man, I'm out. Amen? See, I got to have that same energy when I come preach the word of God. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I thrive to speak life. I thrive to encourage others. Amen? You know, I ain't the best minister in the world, but I'm going to do what I can to please my God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, and like I said, uh, uh, you know, the, there's going to be situations that, that, that the Lord's going to push you in. He's going to push you in uncomfortable situations, very uncomfortable situations, but that's how we grow. That's how, to, that's how we spiritually mature, amen? You know, I remember when I stepped in the men's some, oh, I didn't want to sell candy. I didn't want to sell candy, but I understood that it wasn't about selling candy. It was about out there going saving souls, amen? It was about out there saving souls. And, you know, we got to remember this. You know, when you get pushed to that uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable position, remember, the Lord don't want you here. He wants you to move up. He wants you. We, we serve a moving God. Amen? And we got to remember that good is the enemy of great. You know, that if, if, you know, if we keep on straddling the fence, God wants us to make a choice. Either we're in or we're out. You know, even if we straddle the fence, if we're undecided, still remember that's the enemy's fence. If the enemy has you on the fence, then he's doing his job. If the enemy keeps you from your word, he's doing his job. Yeah, if he keeps you from anything of God, then it's not of God. Amen? Yeah. Amen. God wants us to be vessels. Amen? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> what else can I speak about? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, church. I appreciate you guys for this time. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Brother Anthony. Let's give Anthony a big hand clap. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're talking about are you ready, church? Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Being ready is going to take a lot of preparation. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm still in conference mode. Amen. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm happy what God is doing, not only in our church, but, you know, in the lives of people that, that are in our home. You know, I... Man, there's so much words. There's so many areas that I can go into this with Are You Ready? But what I got together um, for you guys tonight, amen, it's going to be out of the book of First Thessalonians, amen? First Thessalonians chapter 5. If you can turn with me there now, amen? But before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord God, that you, Father God, have appointed, Father God. I pray, God, right now, Lord God, that these words, Lord God, would impact, Lord God, somebody, Father God, that's in this room tonight, Lord God. I pray, Father God, right now that you put me aside, God, so that you can have your way, Lord God. We thank you. We love you in Jesus' mighty name. Living Word says amen and amen. Come on, give it up for Jesus one more time. So we're talking about being ready, right? If you really, if you keep your eyes, amen, on Jesus, amen, there's no need to worry, amen? amen. Jesus is going to get you to where you need to be, amen? amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5, amen? Let's go right here. We're going to read just one scripture due to the sake of time, amen? But you, my brethren, amen, are not in darkness that the day would overtake you like a thief, 
For you are all sons and daughters of light and of the day. We are not night nor living in the darkness, amen, like we were before, amen, living in darkness, amen, at the time, you know, we were lost, amen, we were in darkness, and God grabbed a hold of us, I don't know about you, but he grabbed a hold of me, amen, when I was at the lowest part of my life, amen, when I was up to no good, amen, when things were happening around me, but I was just living the life that I wanted to live, amen, I needed a little bit of light, amen. A little bit of light and takes being watchful, amen? Being watchful and staying alert, amen? Because the devil doesn't want to let go of you, amen? He wants to fight tooth and nail to keep you bound, amen, to keep you in that darkness. But how many of us know that once you accept Jesus Christ in your life, amen, now you're a son and a daughter of the King Most High, amen, now you're a child of God, amen. Nothing can stop you, amen, from doing what God's going to do in your life got to surrender amen but be watchful amen i believe that paul the apostle was talking about spiritual darkness amen living a life amen not knowing who god is in your life amen that he's gonna bring light into you as long as you're spiritually awakened amen look at your neighbor are they asleep if they are slap them wake them up amen believers are in the light amen they see what is coming not like unbelievers who are Oh, who are not aware that their end is near. They're in the dark, amen? Isn't it a scary thought, amen, when you're living in sin, amen, and you know the word of God, amen? The word of God says that it's better to not know the word, amen, than what it is to know the word, amen, because now we know. Now we're exposed to the truth, amen. Now we're exposed, amen, to how we're supposed to be living a godly life. But if you want to keep playing around, amen, it's not a time to play around. You need to be ready, amen? Be ready for that day when Jesus Christ comes back, amen? Amen. And he takes us to heaven. Amen. The promise. Amen. Keep your eyes on the promise. Stay ready and stay alert. Amen. amen. The apostle Paul talks about this watchfulness throughout chapter 5 in 1 Thessalonians. Like I said, due to time, I'm not going to um, read through the whole thing. But if you get time, you go home, go read it. It's powerful stuff. It talks about, you know, him telling the church of Thessalonians to be ready. Be watchful, amen. Not living a lifestyle, amen, that's, that's all messed up, amen. That's living in darkness, amen. Because we know that the times are evil. Like Brother Anthony was saying, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. People are losing their lives in a quick minute, in a quick instant, you know, uh, a lot of people are just dropping dead, amen. They're thinking about what's going on. I believe that God is preparing each and every one of us to get ready, amen, to be ready so that way we're not left behind, amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be left behind. I want to be able, amen, to be that, that example to my family, the example to my friends, no matter who it is, so that way they won't be left behind, amen, because we know that Jesus is coming, and we're going to stand on his promise and, and tell everybody who he is, amen, before we leave this earth earth amen. amen hallelujah come on somebody so then let us not sleep as others do amen any sleepers in the house who like to sleep hello men's home a lot of sleepers over there but it's all right man because they're hard workers they're always prepared amen love the men's home man so others you know do not let be alert amen and sober because the days are evil and we can see evidence all around us how evil has taken over our communities amen our cities our towns amen our workplaces our schools and even in churches amen even in the church and in the homes amen there's still a lot of evil that needs to be exposed amen but we have to understand that without jesus christ in your life amen you're not gonna be exposed to the truth if you still live in darkness you gotta be ready stay ready people stay ready church it's well worth it god is coming back i really believe i was talking to the home and telling them that before you know i, I really understood everything i used to think about it like yeah right you know it's, it's just really going to happen but as you mature in the things of christ and you start to really meditate on it and think about it it's all true man if you can see all the signs around us there's a lot of people out there that don't know the truth and that's where we step in that's where our job becomes more effective when we're out there and we're ministering the word of god and being those disciples amen and those people that are preaching amen preaching to the people amen you can be at the at the liquor store at the market you could be wherever you want to be at but we're all called to preach and minister the word of god amen, amen. amen. hallelujah but since we are not of the day 
But since we are not of the day, let us be sober or not of the night. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God so that we may be ready for the day of his return. The apostle Paul, Paul encourages us to be watchful against spiritual drunkenness and sin. Amen. Paul says to watch out and be alert as well as sober minded and to encourage one another. Amen. Build up one another to promote spiritual growth in one another to comfort and edify each other this is the responsibility of the entire church amen not just our pastors not just our leaders amen not just our men's home director amen but it's everybody's responsibility amen to let people know amen, amen. hallelujah come on let's give jesus a big hand clap amen like I said, I can go a lot of places with this, but I really believe that right now, you know, um, you know, God is doing something. God is on the move. God is, man, this conference is like, I was watching some of it last night. And I'm going to step away from this. I was watching it last night, the night before, man, it just got me stirred up. It got me, something in my spirit is just happening, you know, and, and what it is, is God is doing something. God, God is preparing each and every one of us through our spirits, not only through our spirits, through our ministry, you know, a lot a lot of people are are being ready are being prepared amen he's preparing us he's preparing you know the the people in the church he's praying brother anthony the men's home you know hopefully you know everybody's ready to come up here one day amen it's not easy amen i still get nervous but amen hey hey whatever i'm ready I'm ready for this. Amen. I'm not going to give up because the devil's trying to take me out or I'm not going to shy away. Amen. I know there's still a lot of growth that needs to be developed, but I'm going to stay pressed in. Amen. Amen. Got to encourage one another, not discourage one another. Amen. 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 And in closing, I'm good. Okay. In closing, we cannot be happy when Jesus returns if he finds us divided and at war with one another or ignoring one another's spiritual needs therefore be watchful and alert amen church amen that's all i have for you god bless you be ready come on let's give it up for these men coming up here amen how many of us know that it, it takes you know urgency amen like i said you know i call them right at that time and say hey prepare something but like I always say, if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Amen? Amen. And that's one of the main things. We're going to stay on that topic talking about, you know, how, you know, Jesus is coming back. And we have to understand that the, there has to be a readiness within our spirit. And many of us, you know, yeah, we can say we come to church, we raise our hand, we sing a hallelujah, amen. But in reality, you know, still how are we living in? You know, I'm not saying that that the way we live, God, of course, wants you to come. But that's where we have to engage our life to understand that, hey, wait a minute. Now I do have a purpose for my life. You know, when I was out in the world, you know, I believed that we didn't have a purpose for our lives. So the preparation, it, it's good. Tell your neighbor it's good. You see, in 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 16 says, be on your guard. Tell your neighbor, you got to be on guard. But then it says, stand firm in the faith and be courageous and be strong. Do everything in love. Meaning that just because, you know, we might, you know, we were crazy in the world. I don't know about you, but look at your neighbor. They look pretty crazy. Say, ay, 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 ay. But God don't want to take that craziness off of you, you know, for him. Believe me, he's the one that made you crazy. Right? Yeah. But now we come to serve the Lord and we don't want to get crazy. Now we want to be moved by what we feel. When you were out in the world, you, you know, you weren't going through feelings. You're like, yeah, okay, it's on and cracking. Well, that's the same way the Lord says, don't go by your feelings because the enemy is going to mess with us within our minds. Like, you know, Anthony was saying right now, our young people are the ones that are getting hit the most. You know, and if you don't understand that, you know, you're like, man, you're missing it. I don't know about you, but I see the, what's going on, and I'm alert on it, but still, what do I do is continue to encourage the young people. You know, we got a lot of our young ones that are beginning to do a lot of the things in the church. Hallelujah. So tell your neighbor, take off your hat. 
And stop hiding around titles and duties. Hello, somebody. You know, we have to understand that when we start preparing, you know, we can't just put a title on us. Some of us want to be a title. If you want to be a title, then be a servant. That's what we should be entitled to, to be serving, to serve. Jesus came to serve. Me as a pastor, I'm a servant, amen, to service people, you know, in any way that I can. And my, my, my duty is to equip the saints. Tell your neighbor, we're the saints. Hello, somebody. But then again, we have to understand that when we start preparing ourselves, we have to learn how to become back to become sons and daughters. Amen. Tell your neighbor, man, we do have to become sons and daughters. Amen. You see, God is coming for his church and we have to prepare ourselves. Just like we talked about the day of Noah. Didn't nobody wanted to hear it. Sometimes it sounds like up here in Upland. No one wants to hear it, right? Oh, yeah, I heard that. Or I'll do it later. You might not get it later. You know, like Buddy was talking about, you know, that time is going so quick. And, you know, the Bible says that every day that we're living, it's, we're getting closer to God. Amen. And, and then the Bible also says that tomorrow is not promised. How would you hate, you know, to just not know that, hey, wait a minute, that it was too late. And that's what we have to really prepare ourselves. And, okay, say, well, pastor, I do believe in Christ, and I believe I've been saved and all that. But what about the person next to you? What about my family member? What about my sister? What about my brother? What about my coworker? What about all these people? Do they know if they're saved? You see, many of us, if we're not catching it, we're not going to see it. And the enemy likes, that's why I said the enemy will come and hit us in different ways. Some of us, too, we start straying away because we become successful. And, you know, I like the way at the conference they were talking about the snake eggs. Amen. Watch out for the snake eggs. Amen. Because they will come. And then one will be taken away and the other will stay. Amen. Don't let the eggs take you away. Tell your neighbor. But again, what is something that when we start preparing, we have to understand that we cannot allow fear to overcome what we're doing for God. Sometimes we don't want to do the, un, how would you say, even coming up here. For the man, you know, as preparing, you know, my, like I said, myself, it's to equip the saints. This is what we have to do regardless. I'm not saying just in the church, but beyond the church. Here we come to get the direction and the direction that we're going. And like it says, but as well as we get prepared is what we take out back out into the streets. The church is not just where we want to do where everything, oh, well, we're here at the church and that's it. No, like I said, bring, you know, friends, invite them and let them know, hey, wait a minute. You know, this is a place that we can develop. It's a place that we have a direction in our life. It's a place where we start hearing the truth being speak, spoken. Amen. I don't know about you, but like I always, you know, share, you know, I needed to hear the truth. You know what I'm talking about? You know, the, being out there all, you know, buck wild out there. And you know that you're laughing because you were out there with me too, amen? But in reality, we were all before we knew God. But then we start knowing God and then, you know, a little fearful. Well, I'll just, I'll just stay where I'm at. I'll just do this little bit that I have to do. You know, I just don't want to get involved. Don't, I, I don't want to raise my hand, okay? But no, there's more. Tell your neighbor there's more. How many are ready? Amen. Don't allow fear to blind you. In 1 Timothy 1.7, you know, uh, I don't have the scripture with me right now. Here, let me get it real fast. But in 1 Timothy 1.7, you know, it, 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 you can read it afterwards. Don't allow fear to to blind you you know timothy you know was uh paul's son son amen spiritual son and there was so much stuff going on with timothy and he would always get fearful when you know the elders were there amen and how many of us know that even when we're doing you know the work of god you can't allow you know 
anybody else or thinking that they know more than you. Like I said, God is looking for the ones that, that, that man, that he can use, amen. And he uses the worst ones, amen. Everybody looks at pastor, yeah, we can tell, amen. But he uses the worst of the worst. Why? Because, man, believe me, he can work with this one. And he can say, look, look what I can do with this one. Oh, come on, if you're going to clap for Jesus, amen. But you got to put yourself in this way too. But fear will blind us. Fear won't allow us to keep growing in him, amen. In other words, how many want to produce in their life? How many want to grow basically what we're doing, amen? Well, fear won't allow you to grow. It will paralyze you, amen? And like Buddy was talking about, we need to learn to start speaking life to each other. We need to learn to speak life to ourselves because we live in discouragement days. And sometimes, you know, we won't feel God around. And that's why it says, you know what? Keep trusting in me. Keep praying. Don't worry. Tell your neighbor, I got you. My Bible says that God would never leave us nor forsake us. Don't allow the enemy to take you out. Amen. I don't know today where we're at tonight, but still, we have to now still keep putting the armor of God within our lives. Say how, how you would say, you know, as we know that we're getting ready. We're getting ready for something new this year. I, I really, it's been put in my spirit, you know, to take it into the next level. Amen. Uh, we're supposed to, I believe that next week we're going to meet the mayor of this of city of Upland. And I don't know about you, but these are things that we can now start sharing on what we can do. I have a urgency that I haven't even told the men's home. But I want to start preaching to our homeless people that are out here to go out there on a day for them and just feed them, amen, and give them the word. Feed them with the word and give them food. But also, you know, these are the things that, that want we want to get out of just being in the church, amen. Because let me tell you, the church is good. Tell your neighbor, the church is good. But God wants us out of the church. And, and it, it takes work. Tell your neighbor, it takes work. And you guys are involved in it. Amen. I don't say, I don't want to say, come on, let's go church. And yeah, where's everybody at me and my wife still standing there. I told you they weren't going to come. Hello. The men's home always going to be there. We'd send them first. Make sure. And I keep them, make sure they're on that side and get over there. But, you know, it, it's exciting, church, for what God has because why? That we know that we're preparing ourselves. I was, uh, right now, before we close, I'm going to close it up. Um, like I said, just to get ready. But I was looking at this minister, a pastor, right? And it was something that was really got to my heart because, you know, I said, maybe I should try that one time. But he dressed up as a homeless person. And he was sitting in front of his church to see how many people would reach out to this homeless person. And, you know, to me, it seemed prepared. You know, we need to carry the love of God within our lives. But I seen all these people in the video. It was showing that they weren't really stopped. They were like looking like, should I stop or not? And kept going. So I was like, oh, man, all these people are just failing it. But no, he, he came back and he, he came and he walked up to the pulpit. Can you imagine a homeless man, me, coming up to the pulpit all bearded up? And it was a man that was out there. And he took out the beard. He took out the wig. And I was like, man, you know, and I said, man, all these people. He goes, you know what? He started ministering that, you know, he, what he did to see where his church was at. And I said, oh, man, they all failed. But no, they didn't. He, he, he pulled up. He says, I'm very proud of my church. That God is developing the people. Actually, the people were telling this homeless man, hey, you want to come to our church? Come on, let's go in. Let me pray for you with the kids. And a lot of people were stopping up. And even the kids. 
And to me, it like touched me because, uh, you know, many of us might not look at that. You know, success starts coming into our lives and, you know, we got saved and, and that's it. You know, it's just about me. It's me, 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 amen, and nobody else. But in reality, understanding that there's a lot of people that are broken out there that are waiting for us, amen. And, um, you know, to me, I just say, church, let's prepare ourselves. You know, we're starting this new year, 2023, in a good start. And um, if you're here today, hallelujah, praise God, we encourage you. Uh, I know we have a visitor today, hallelujah, we encourage you to keep coming out, amen. And thank you, Lauren, because I know Lauren, man, she's, she's a fighter. With Anthony too, amen, she get up there, Anthony, amen. But it's good, because that's like I said, God always looks for the people that we're just ordinary people, amen. But Melimi can do a lot of big things. If we can all stand tonight, amen. Remember, tonight was Wednesday night radicals, amen. So if you're out here, hallelujah, praise God. Sunday, we're going to really get into it. Um, also, one thing, there was one message that wasn't. We're going to start our class. We're going to have the next class. It's uh, uh, growing through discipleship. And you guys remember the first class that we did, it was like a six-week course with your booklet, and it's going to be all scripture. We're going to do the second part, amen?